In this video, the master instructors from Best Incorporated will demonstrate two methods of tinning a wire. Before the demonstration, let's talk about why a wire needs to be tinned. The first reason is that tinning binds all the individual strands of the wire into a single, stronger unit when compared to an untinned wire. This binding also prevents separation of the individual strands when the wire is formed to a terminal. Second, when a wire is tinned, the tinning process verifies that the wire has remained solderable. According to the J-Standard 001 Requirements for Soldered Electrical and Electronic Assemblies process document, a wire must be tested for solderability before installation. However, the J-Standard 001 does allow for the use of tinning rather than solderability test for every wire. Finally, solder bonds to solder easier than solder bonds to other metals. Much like a carpenter who applies glue to two pieces of wood that are to be glued together, tinning coats the wire in solder for easier bonding to the terminal or other wire. Strip and clean the wire to a length sufficient to use in the final installation, plus a little extra length. The extra length of wire can be trimmed to the final length after the wire has been wrapped to the terminal. Apply flux to the area of the wire to be tinned. Using a large thermal mass tip and solder wire, create a heat bridge between the soldering iron tip and the surface of the wire. Keeping the iron tip in contact with the wire, apply solder from the opposite side of the wire down toward the end of the wire. Clean the wire with the appropriate solvent. An alternative method for tinning uses a mini solder pot with molten solder. For this procedure, you will also need a source of flux and a tool to remove dross from the top of the solder bath. Dross is a coating of oxidized solder and other contaminants from previous uses of the solder pot. Removing the dross will ensure access to clean solder. Apply flux to the wire to be tinned. Clean the dross from the surface of the solder pot then immerse the wire into the molten solder. Move the wire gently across the solder in a sweeping motion. This movement allows the wire to be removed from the solder bath at a location where the flux residue and oxides are not present. Clean the wire and inspect according to the IPC A610 Acceptability of Electronic Assemblies standard. The IPC A610 groups electronic assemblies into three classes. These classes are based on the intended end-use environment for the assembly. Class 1, General Electronic Products, are those where the major requirement is that the assembly is functional. Class 2, Dedicated Service Products, are assemblies where continued performance and extended life are desired, but not critical. Typically, the end-use environment would not cause failures. Class 3, High performance or harsh environment products are assemblies in which high performance and performance on demand are critical. Downtime cannot be tolerated or the extreme environment may be uncommonly harsh. According to the IPC A610, on a class 3 assembly tinned wire, the solder should penetrate to the inner strands of the wire. While this is not a visually inspectable condition, the results of the solder not penetrating to the inner strands will become evident when the wire is formed to a terminal. It is likely that a wire without penetration of the solder will have strand separation, also known as bird caging, in the formed wire. There should be no more than one wire diameter of untinned wire when measured from the insulation of the wire. A wire diameter is defined as the diameter of the wire conductor and the outer diameter of the insulation. No more than 5% of the area to be attached to the terminal can be untinned. It is likely that solder will wick under the insulation of the wire. This wicking is acceptable as long as the wire is not required to remain flexible in the wicked area. If the area of the wire that has wicked solder bends multiple times, the wire will likely work harden and break. Visit and follow us on our YouTube channel, Soldering Geek, for more videos. For training classes, supplies, and more, visit our website, www.solder.net.